The gut is a major driver of endometriosis. There is no doubt about it in the scientific literature. It's linked to the causes, severity, signs and symptoms, every aspect of it. And in fact, the first studies date back 20 or 30 years, but in the last couple of years, there are now hundreds of studies a year linking the gut and endometriosis. But the great thing about that is the studies are now just starting to show that if you start to fix the gut in certain ways, which I'll be talking about, you can then start to reverse the signs and symptoms and condition endometriosis. So we've now got some great scientific information coming out about and available. Now, when it comes to endometriosis, roughly 10% of the female population uh, in reproductive age will suffer from endometriosis. Now, that may be as high as 20%. And the reason it's such a large discrepancy between 10 and 20% is because it's you would know it's almost difficult, impossible to diagnose without laparoscopy and surgery. However, the research very, very clearly shows, and by the way, most women, it takes five, to seven to nine years before they're actually diagnosed with endometriosis. At least this is what the studies show. And remember, I'm a researcher and I just go into all of the scientific studies. But what we do know is the longer period of dysmenorrhea, so pelvic pain, cramps, um, heavy clots, irregular periods, all those things come together. And the longer you have those, the more likely is that you suffer or will su be suffering from endometriosis. In fact, the studies show that if it's almost all the time, almost every month for years on end, then there's a 19 times, that's 1,900% increased risk of you having endometriosis. So the great thing though, is you can already start finding strategies that I'll be putting up and giving you that can start to reduce these signs and symptoms. This is what the studies are showing. So let me start off with here a simple model that I built about endometriosis and the gut and why we have such a, a major problem. And the first of all is there are three conditions that are linked with endometriosis. Well, the immune system is probably the most important one these three conditions are all linked. So we've got inflammation, which is the chronic inflammation or the extra, extra inflammation caused by the imbalances in the body. We've got the immune system, which regulates inflammation and other conditions. We've also got a hormonal imbalance, primarily estrogen. Now, these are impacting each other. The immune system can contribute to inflammation. It does contribute to inflammation. And of course, inflammation can contribute to hormonal imbalance and vice versa, hormonal imbalance can contribute to inflammation. So these are all intertwined. What we do know that these are all heavily influenced by the gut. This one, for example, uh, hormonal imbalance. I have a whole video on something called the estrobolome please have a look at it. I'll, I'll share a link below, but the estrel, estrobolome is the way that the gut determines what happens with the excess estrogen and it recycles it or not. More on that later, but check out that video because it's very, very important. So we've got these conditions. We know the gut influences inflammation, immune system and hormone imbalance in a very, very large way, not a small way, in a large way. And some of the evidence of that suggests that, for example, in the gut, there's, a, there's a, a chemical that the bacteria, that the microorganisms in the gut called the microbiome, they ferment fibers. And along with some other nutrients like polyphenols, they will produce a chemical called butyrate. Now, here's a little hint already. Fiber literally is probably the most important, fiber is the most important supplement that uh, most of us can take. So supplement with fiber, good balanced fiber, uh, you produce butyrate. Now, butyrate lowers inflammation, has an effect on the immune system, and also helps with hormonal imbalances as a link between all of those. Now, the great thing is butyrate has already been shown to reduce endometriosis signs, symptoms, and severity. So just using that. However, we know we can get the best butyrate because it ferments in the large intestine. The bacteria ferment fiber to produce butyrate. Now, that's only one of the good chemicals produced in the gut. So that's one of the reasons why fiber consistently shows up in a negative relationship with endometriosis. The higher the fiber intake, the lower the risk of endometriosis. More on that later on. Now we've got some of the more nasty chemicals on the nasty side of endometriosis. And we've got 
LPS, lipopolysaccharides. These are produced in the gut when the gut bacteria, the wrong type of gut bacteria, usually the what are called gram negative, die off. And as they die off, they release all of these toxic chemicals and LPS. And if you've got leaky gut, it's able to get through into the blood and cause havoc throughout the body, including inflammation, immune responses, and ultra-hormonal imbalances as well. So you've got to understand that it's all intertwined and all linked. And LPS, lipopolysaccharides, are linked with lots of lots and lots of gut conditions and health conditions around the body. They're almost the exact opposite of this good one here, and that's the bad one there. The second one is called beta-glucuronidase. And this is literally the enzymes produced by bacteria in the gut to recycle estrogen from the gut where it's been dumped and got rid of back into the body. So the more of this beta-glucuronidase in your gut, the bacteria are producing more of this enzyme, beta-glucuronidase, then they're recycling the estrogen, so you have elevated levels of estrogen. So this uh, beta-glucuronidase has been linked with all of the excess estrogen type um, uh, effects, including, including breast cancer. So we've got lots of issues, beta-glucuronidase. And again, this is the particular types of bacteria and microorganisms, the microbiome, that are producing this. So we've got this and this producing negative effects on the hormonal imbalance, the immune system and the inflammation. And on the positive side, we've got an example of butyrate, which is causing positive effects along the gut, uh, general health, and of course, in terms of these three conditions, and as a, as a result, endometriosis. The supporting evidence connecting endometriosis and the gut and those mechanisms I've just shown you, first of all, come from the fact that 90%, in fact, more than 90%, it may even be up as close to 100% of women with endometriosis have gut issues. And it's usually not one, it's a combination. And these include celiac disease, uh, irritable bowel syndrome, inflammatory bowel disease such as Crohn's, leaky gut reflux, abdominal bloat, SIBO, which is small intestinal bacteria overgrowth, and that's closely related with uh, abdominal bloat. By the way, I cover these in my other videos on SIBO and reflux and so on, so check those out. Uh, nausea, vomiting, constipation, and diarrhea. And uh, as I said, it's often not one, but a combination of these that women will have. Now, then that goes across here, and the next layer of evidence demonstrates that women who have endometriosis have what is called gut dysbiosis. Now, gut dysbiosis is an imbalance of the different types of microorganisms in the large intestine. And it's not about how many, but the greatest variety gives generally the greatest amount of health. And what we find in endometriosis is that there's a, a kind of a tendency towards having higher levels of eight different groups, what are called taxa, eight different groups of microorganisms, primarily bacteria, including Shingella and E. coli, and a, an increase in those ones, and a decrease in the most common one that you would have heard of frequently, because it's on the yogurt containers and probiotics, is lactobacillus. So we've got an endometriosis microbiome, one that at some stage, very soon, you'll be able to identify, literally, you'll be able to identify endometriosis by understanding the progression of your microbiome and looking at what microorganisms are in your microbiome, what is the biodiversity. But you definitely have uh, that link between gut dysbiosis and endometriosis, so it's showing that link. Now there's also lots of studies coming out recently, in the last year or so, about bacterial vaginosis, which is again, a bacterial overgrowth and the wrong type of bacteria. Again, bacteria dysbiosis in the vagina. And as a result of that, and throughout the whole reproductive interaction, fact that the studies are tending to show but these are the two areas and particularly this one which is most studied showing a definite link between gut disruption gut dysbiosis and endometriosis and then we also find that this gut dysbiosis is linked with all these other conditions which happen to be very common conditions much more common in endometriosis than women who don't have endometriosis and so we find people who are women with endometriosis have uh, often poor sleep, anxiety, depression, mood swings, and migraine. And of course, you've all heard about that gut-mind axis, the gut-mind link, and the gut-brain link, and that is explaining lots of these. 
So this dysbiosis and endometriosis have this in common. Similarly, they have all of these mixed of autoimmune conditions like uh, asthma and allergy sensitivities, chronic fatigue, other autoimmune conditions, uh, metabolic syndrome, and even diabetes type one and two are much more common in women who have endometriosis, much, much more common than in control groups that, that are healthy and not showing signs of endometriosis. And similarly, we know that gut dysbiosis, that imbalance in the gut microbiome, plays a large role in this and that as well. More convincing evidence is the studies they've done on mice who have had endometriosis induced in them. And what they did in the first big study, they gave them a high dose mixed combination of antibiotics so it wipes out the whole gut microbiome. So those 100 trillion microorganisms in the gut were all wiped out and wiped out. And as a result of that, they saw a decrease in endometriotic lesions, proliferation of cells, and a decrease of inflammation. So the first evidence to show, really clear evidence to show that working from the gut out improves endometriosis. They then extended that study and they gave the same antibiotic mice, these ones up here, that had endometriosis, started to clear it up. Then they gave them the feces from mice that still had endometriosis. Now, it's quite common in the animal kingdom for uh, animals to uh, sniff, smell, eat other animals and even their own poo. And it's a way of reinvigorating the gut microbiome in many of the species and so on. We've got better techniques now called pro, probiotics and so on. But uh, So they gave these mice that had no gut microbiome, they gave them the feces from the mice who had endometriosis. So just introducing that same microbiome and they started to develop lesions. So an increase in the lesion growth and an increase in inflammation indicating the gut microbiome, very strongly indicating that the gut microbiome is a big driver in endometriosis. The second group of studies that have been done now literally have been looking at the use of probiotics in both uh, mice, rats, and humans, and in women. And in the studies on mice and rats that had endometriosis, that most of them last between about four and eight weeks. Now, that doesn't mean the solution to your endometriosis is four to eight weeks because, again, if the problem has been existing for a long time, it usually requires a lot, lot longer. And I'm going to show you along the way some really great solutions, cheap, easy, cost-effective solutions that are going to improve your outcomes. But along the way, in this study, what they did was they got the rats and the mice and they gave them Lactobacillus caesarei. This is a fairly common uh, uh, probiotic that you can get. Now, they've used lots of other probiotic probiotics that you can get uh, over the counter in yogurts and so on in other experiments too. And in this one, it prevented further lesions and de decreased the existing lesions. And in two of the nine rats, it they, they ended up being completely lesion free. So the just the single simple use of probiotics made a big difference to these rats and in other studies in mice. So there's lots of these studies out there now. Now, in the, in the terms of studies that have been done on with women and uh, uh, probiotics and so on, the first of the studies really just showed that uh, probiotics make a big difference in decreasing inflammation in women with endometriosis. That was a, a while ago. And of course, one of the problems with endometriosis in humans is it's very difficult to get the uh, any markers to indicate that it has gone down because it relies on laparoscopy and surgery and interventions to measure and monitor a lot of it. So we're not getting the best markers in this case compared to what we did do or what they did do in those experiments. But in a study of 37 women who had stage three to four endometriosis, they used a combination of probiotics. Again, a combination that you can typically get over the counter. And it was 10 to nine, which means uh, basically 10 billion, 9 billion um, microorganisms. Uh, and that's not uncommon. You can get much, much higher concentrations. In fact, I'm going to suggest right now that you do get high concentrations, but we'll talk about that later. And they used a combination in this one study, uh, Lactobacillus acidophilus, that's the one you frequently get in yogurts, Lactobacillus plantarum, Lactobacillus fermentum, and Lactobacillus gesseria, the same one that they, they used over here. And after 12 weeks, there was a dramatic and a significant de decrease in pain. Uh, in another study of 62 women where they used just the one bacteria, Lactobacillus gesserii, there was a decrease in pain 
and improved markers of endometriosis and a decrease in inflammation. All positive outcomes. All this information gives us the best strategies to reduce and eliminate endometriosis. So what we're after is lowering inflammation, getting the immune system back in balance and getting the hormones, estrogen, back in balance via the gut, which is the biggest driver of endometriosis. I've already mentioned the probiotics, without a doubt, these are showing up, but it's, it's really recent. So my suggestion is probably going to be bifidobacteria and a whole raft of others are going to show up. But if you're looking for a probiotic mix, that's what you're after. These are the lactobacillus and the Gesseria acidophilus fermentum plantarum. These are the ones you're after, uh, 9 billion. However, probiotics are considered extremely safe and I take a lot, lot, lot more. So if I get sick, I get a, a virus, I get anything, I take a huge amount of probiotics. So that's a little hint. If you want to speed up the process of reversing the conditions you're talking about, then what you want to do is take higher doses of these. They're extremely safe. Then we get to the next part of the gut, which I haven't mentioned yet, but I'll be talking about in part two. And that is fiber. Now fiber, pre-body fiber, is the fiber or the food that feeds the gut microbiome. So all these healthy probiotics and the healthy ones in your gut that are looking after your system, they need the right type of foods. And the best type of foods are prebiotic fibers. They make the butyrate that I mentioned earlier. And as a result, it has all the anti-inflammatory, all those properties there that are beneficial. But they also know in, in the endometrius model, endometriosis models with mice and rats that it lowers angiogenesis, which is the spread of the cells, cell proliferation, cell migration, and increases the suicide of the toxic cells, the ap apoptosis. So it has benefits definitely with, with endometriosis. So that's fiber and prebiotics, and we know that works through the gut. And my favorite, without any doubt, fiber is K fiber. It's a sugar cane extract. It's taking the sugar out, and it's got all these other nutrients. It's not just fiber, it's a total gut food. But then we also find that these fibers decrease inflammation and oxidation, improve the immune function in general, and restores hormonal balance in the estrobolome. Now, you will remember, I've already told you, I have a video on the estrobolome. It is well worth watching because it explains how the gut can manipulate the estrogen and other hormone levels for that matter by being out of balance. So again, what we're trying to do is get the gut back into balance. Fiber is a great way of doing it and it works through the estrobolome. Watch that video without that, check it out. And then we also know fiber improves metabolic health, mental health, which are some of the conditions of uh, endometriosis that people are reporting at much higher levels, as well as lots and lots of gut issues. So all of these things are fixed with the addition of fiber. I, when, when I talk about the probably the single best supplement people can supplement with to live longer, I also recommend fiber, prebiotic fibers. So then we go on to a quick summary of what I'm gonna present in part two, but I wanted to get you started to understand that there's a whole other area of food and nutrition and lifestyle factors that indirectly affect the gut. And for example, if I've got down here, exercise. Exercise actually is beneficial for the gut to help build up the gut microbiome. But I'll get back to that in a moment. Melatonin shows up top of the list of the supplements to be able to benefit endometriosis. So in the studies that have been done, in both women and rats and mice and cells and all those levels, there's a whole body of evidence growing rapidly about en uh, endometriosis benefiting from melatonin. It's not just the sleep neurotransmitter hormone, it is the, uh, it has at least 101 other benefits around the body. And I take it for all those other benefits as well as sleep. Antioxidant and anti-inflammatory foods and nutrients. Uh, the nutrients include things like curcumin, uh, green tea extract, or any of those concentrates you can get. They've all been shown to have some ben benefits. And I'll, again, I'll go in a lot more in depth in part two to show you how they all can interact and benefit you. But these are safe, they're food extracts uh, and, and particular foods. And that, that includes the, the, the seeds, the nuts, the herbs, the spices, herbs and spices are 10 to 100 times more potent than the veggies. And veggies are absolutely essential for healing the gut. Then we get down to omega-3, shows up a lot of research on omega-3. These are the fish oils benefiting endometriosis. A lot of research on, on that one. So please get onto that straight away and check out part two. 
Uh, get rid of your omega-6s. These are the vegetable oils which cause inflammation in the gut. These are the sunflower, safflower, rapeseed, grapeseed. These are the ones that people tell you they're heart friendly. They're not. These are the ones that some of the government authorities are trying to sell you. Don't. They are absolutely no go. We consume about 20 times too much of them. Uh, a, a lot of research is coming out. It's pretty vague research, but it's suggesting the idea of cutting down your gluten. This is the protein that they find in your grains. Uh, and we know that gluten poisons your gut microbiome and poisons those probiotics. So again, lowering gluten. I have another video just on the toxic side effects of gluten. So getting rid of the gluten. And then when it comes to lifestyle factors, decrease stress. Stress is a big player in endometriosis. Stress, by the way, is a big player in the gut. And the gut stress link exists. So uh, stress situations create poor gut, poor gut creates more stress situation. It's a vicious cycle that goes around. And of course, exercise. Now, the evidence on exercise, while overwhelmingly beneficial, suggests that women with endometriosis tend to exercise less because of pain. So the key here is trying to find forms of exercise that are gentle and light and are not gonna cause that pain because Exercise, as I mentioned earlier, has a huge positive benefit on the gut and on endometriosis. I've given you a huge amount of information to get started. Check it all out. My suggestion is you watch this a couple of times. Please subscribe to the channel, my channel. I'm putting out a lot of information on women's health and these type of issues. And of course, watch part two because I'll be covering part two, the diet and lifestyle factors that influence the gut for endometriosis.